We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags Available on Amazon right now Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Street. This is episode 45. Kind of a serious one, but hear me out, would ya? Um, I'm going to tap into a few things. Some things you'll like, some you won't. But go to ride with me. It's only a 30 minute show. And uh really would appreciate your uh, comments. Um, uh, we always hope for professional comments yay nay or um you know uh, good bad or ugly uh as long as you're professional we love to hear from you and gives us ideas for our next show also want to remind you that easy street is on good talk radio and visit good talk radio just go to www.good <laughs> good talk radio.com we're also on spreaker and several other platforms so please take the time and check it out and also to help us out Please feel free to check out some of our Ranger Rob poopy bags. Um, they're just a great product. They're on Amazon and it helps the uh, station and the podcast and the other endeavors we have going on. And uh, we also have these really cool hats. You can find those on Amazon too. <clears throat> so the question is, are you ready? You go, okay, ready for what? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a whole lot of stuff. We're kind of in this mode right now, and it's, it's April, getting towards the end of April. And we all need to realize that we've been in this lockdown, and a lot of things have been going on. First of all, the whole world's been on lockdown, and the economy is insanely down. <laughs> Put it this way. Don't look at the stock markets, by the way. Doesn't give you the true... Someday this stock market might tell us exactly what's going on, but right now don't look at it. We all wish it'd stay up, which it's kind of doing uh, because of our 401ks and retirement plans and stuff. And so, I mean, yay, yay, <laughs> yay. Um, let's get into, we're going to get into a couple of things. And, and I ask you to be patient and go through this with me. We're going to talk about the economic impact but we're going to talk about faith a little bit too and um, even if you're on the fence about faith and stuff st stick stick with me would you just kind of um, give it a try just, <laughs> just give it a try um, you know you guys want me to hear your side of things whether it's atheist or all that stuff and try to you know I, I hang on I don't dismiss it I, I listen to what you have to say and I ask if you would do that for me too well a couple of things we got to get ready for the food scenario um, we've got a taste of what life is going to be like with a little bit in the in the grocery stores but a few things we haven't seen is the result of all these packing plants and meat and there's a lot of other problems with wheat we don't produce enough wheat and so people who do produce enough wheat aren't going to ship it to us because they want to keep it from themselves with do you blame them they're nationalistic just like we are or trying to be anyway so we're starting to see here and there things missing on the shelves and we never thought we'd see today did we <laughs> yeah but we're really um, and we're seeing a little bit on meat too but not enough to freak out too much but in two three four five weeks from now we're gonna wonder what the heck is going on and it'll start off probably where you can't get some primary cuts of meat anymore because they've streamlined what they do have for production for meat into the simpler cuts um, just to save money and to get it out the door but you're gonna see Prices probably starting increasing um, because of cause um, uh, supply and demand. The pr 
problem is, is you know, when you shut off the restaurants, you shut off all the things we've shut off uh, as far as people that make food or produce food for us, restaurants and stuff, they're not ordering right now. So if you've got 100 cows a day you're producing every, every day, and suddenly 50% of your orders stop, people are still going to grocery stores and stuff, but your orders from restaurants and in schools and things like that stop, yet you still have a hundred cows coming in a day, pretty soon you have a problem. You tell, wait a minute, we can't take any more of these cows and we don't want to buy them anymore. And so then the farmers go, well, wait a minute, I have to sell these cows that produced them and they say, sorry, we're not going to buy them. Or if we do buy them, we're going to buy them really cheap. Um, and which will really hurt the farmers. In a lot of cases, they're eliminating their uh, inventory. Let's just put it that way, which is not a nice, it's a nice way of saying they're slaughtering their, their or getting rid of their meat or euthanizing them before they're going to market because they have no market and they can't afford to feed them. So anyway, it's not a good scenario. And to get back online to so they reduce down to say 50 cows a day. They get back up to 100 cows a day. How do you think that's gonna happen? Overnight? Ain't gonna happen. So we're gonna see stuff in the grocery stores that'll be amazing to us to see because we've never seen it before. We have no idea what our grandparents went through. I used to laugh at my grandmother. <laughs> She'd come over, I was a kid, and uh, she was from Boston. And when she used to um, cook when she, you know, it was just me and my father. I lost my mother really young, but she would always cook dinner for us to be nice. And it was great. Of course, I was a teenager and didn't appreciate it. Um, but she made potatoes all the time. And finally, I, I think it was my dad. I'm like, Dad, why does she make potatoes all the time? And he goes, oh, well, back, uh, back in the Depression days and stuff, that was the most affordable um vegetable you could buy and uh, so that's what they could afford back then so they learned how to cook potatoes in every which way that you could think of to feed their families and so she just kind of kept that going just always thought potatoes was a stable of uh, what we should eat and uh, I've always remembered that and so Let's get up to today and say, let's say things start changing and maybe potatoes are going to be easy to get in vegetables and stuff like that or certain kinds of vegetables. Um, are you willing to make the change? Are you ready to make changes in your diet? And then are you learning? Can you cook? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that just eat out all the time or have food delivered to them or pre-prepared. That might be a problem. There's actually a shortage right now of frozen pizzas. It's like, what? <laughs> Excuse me? It's like, yeah, um, because of the companies that put the pizzas together, they're not running. <laughs> it's cause and effect. So we're just talking about food right now, right? And, uh, um, our next problem is going to come along is when you're unemployed and, 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 and people want to either move, sell houses, stuff like that, or buy a car or anything like that. If you're on furlough or all these kind of things, as much as the banks say, yeah, we'll be help, helpful to you or we're postponing your loan for 90 days. The problem is what they're not telling you is the banks still require like, are you employed? Are you guaranteed to be employed? Um, there's some problems selling or buying a house or buying a car. Um, that's going to be an issue. And these guys that are getting money for their businesses, they're not being given money. They're being loaned money. So when they do go back to work or get their business going again, they now have a debt. Excuse me. I just I have water today. Should be vodka. Anyway, so uh, money is going to be a very strange thing. And then it's got to happen when you borrow a lot and go into debt a lot in the country 
it also causes inflation. And so uh, we're going to see prices on things that, are, that we're just not used to. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for what's coming? That's what this show's all about. But oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. We're going to go deeper. Are you ready? So don't you find this amazing that this whole thing going on with the virus thing is worldwide? Have you ever heard of a worldwide virus like this before? And have you ever seen a worldwide shutdown? It's almost biblical, isn't it? Yeah, I told you I was going to touch in the faith a little bit. I'm not saying it's biblical that it happened and stuff, but there's some amazing things going on lately um, that corresponds with that human book out there, the history of the human uh, man and woman called the Bible. And yes, I'm going to touch on that a little bit. And uh, now you see the, the words I have on the side on the screen there, are you ready? is not only for what's coming as far as our lifestyles and our finances and our food, transportation, fuel, oil. It's all going to be different. And I know there's a lot of people out there like you that don't like change. It's a paradigm shift coming, a big one. And uh, I don't know exactly what it's going to look like. And then, of course, they, they were talking about social tracking. It was like, oh, do you want to work with somebody who's had the virus or hasn't had the virus before? Um, do we want to monitor them or have wristbands or something? That's going to be a, totally something different. Another thing they want to do is get rid of currency because they think it transmits too, many, too much so, and, 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 and there's even talk that they want to get away from the way currency is backed, which is by oil, and go back to gold, a reset. Are you ready for that? <laughs> it's, it's a lot to take in, guys. This is, there's no, um, normally you can say, well, um, learn from the past, learn from history. Uh, some of this, I've never seen anything like it. Not sure exactly. Maybe, you know, if it was just one nation, you could kind of predict what's going to happen. But it's the whole world's affected here. And by the way, we don't have it half as bad as other countries like Africa. Those pillar people are going to get hit badly. Not only are they having trouble with the the virus and the lockdowns, they're having locust problems and food production problems, big time problems. And of course, a lot of the countries are all getting nationalist, nationalistic and not necessarily wanting to help others. Take care of your own, right? Good or bad or, you know, it's, it's becoming the new reality. Other countries are doing it. We will be doing it too. But there's also this thing of all these changes coming on in the earth, the heat, the weather. It's not man-made. Some of you argue that and you can put comments in there, that's fine. But the world has done this before. But this one, this is getting more fierce, more rampant, more earthquakes, more fires, more stuff coming out of the sky. We have more radiation. We're having problems with our um, magnetic sphere. Can't say it right. Sorry. <laughs> um, pole shift. Seems kind of odd. However, this is that book, that book again, I keep talking about. And, and, and I want to tell, talk about the Bible a little bit, but not so much as religion and all that stuff. But the reason I started reading it is I remember hearing people talking about all these things about Israel. Never understood all the things I was hearing and the reports and all that stuff. Finally got to a point, it's like, apparently I need to start reading the Bible to understand Israelis, 
what the Jews are. What are they all about? Turns out it's the book of life. It tells the beginning and also tells about the end. And if you learn to read it and learn and realize that most of the one third of the Bible is prophecy and you go, why does it have prophecy in it? Well, the, the best way I've ever heard of, of why it's the way it is, is if everybody wrote about their religions or their faith um, and put it in a book, it'd just be a instructional book, right? Well, you need a book that needs to be certified that it's holy or it's um, unique. Put prophecy in it. And not only put prophecy in it, that everything that is prophesied in the Bible cannot, each prophecy cannot come true unless the last one did. They're all interconnected. And if you go in, you'll find that there's um, <laughs> hundreds of prophecies that came true already. For example, in 67, 69, I'm not sure. They never thought Israel would be their own country. And, and by miracle, it did. Um, that's just one of dozens of things. But the problem is, is the book also talks about the ending. And there's certain chapters towards the end of the book that tells you that these things that I've been talking about are going to happen just the way as they're happening. One is this terrible thing I'm talking about to you on this show is faith. Many of you are falling away from it. Some of you are just learning the fluffy part of it. And a lot of you don't even want to hear about the ending part. Yet in the Bible, when you read the last chapter, Revelations, it tells you that this is one of the most important chapters to read. Ministers don't want to talk about it because when they, you go to their church, they want to give you the fluff and feel good and motivational speaking kind of thing. So you'll come back and you know, pay into the coffers. It's a business to them. So a lot of ministers, a lot of churches will not talk about this stuff. I think they want to, but they also don't want to see their head counts drop because people get scared or don't want to hear it. And I'm telling you the message is, although it sounds grim, is actually the happiest message ever. And that's where this wording comes in. Are you ready? So there's a thing out there uh, they call um, the rapture, which uh, it could be another word for it. Really don't even use that word in the Bible. Um, it's a time where for those of faith, for those who learned, for those who made themselves ready, which means you don't have to be perfect. We have a solution for that it's called Jesus. You don't need to be perfect. You just need to be humble, repent, ask for forgiveness for the things that we've done that breaks the Ten Commandments. So that's that's our covenant right there, which is almost impossible for humans to follow. And that's why we had Jesus in the first place. He says, these guys can't follow this. I'll die for their sins. Let them pass, basically. I'm trying to keep this in layman's terms. I'm not trying to get all fluffy and religious on you, but it's important. My mission, along with any other who's a Christian or of somebody of faith, is in these times, we, in order for us to look up and be ready, means that we also have to make sure that we tell anybody we know that this exists. It's up to you, though. It's not up to me to say, Go read a Bible. <laughs> it's not a fun book to read. It's a hard book to read. I, I highly suggest audio. <laughs> audio is the best. Find yourself some good shows like Tom Tom Hughes or there's a crazy guy out there. It's kind of fun to watch. His name's uh, 
Um, I just went blank. Bailey. Anyway, um, there's a lot of shows that help you interpret it. And uh, they're readily available and they're not that long to watch and they're private. So I ask you again, are you ready? And I'm not going into detail what I mean by are you ready? Um, I'm asking are you ready for what's coming in reality as far as economy and our lives? But and you're, you're, we're talking something much bigger much bigger than all that because this and these things that have been happening are written and prophesied they exist and if their sequence is right it will be an indication for those of faith to know what's happening and it's not a time to be scared it's one to be prepared the biggest statement you'll hear out of the thing is when these come to pass, look up and be ready. That means that you understand your faith. You understand your mission. You understand where you're, what's going to happen because it's a glorious thing. What are we doing right now? We're just an ant on a, on a hill existing in a big place and um, this is just the beginning part we, you've been promised if you'd learn about it an eternal life no more of this aches and pains and cramping <laughs> and Crohn's disease and um, being overweight and and uh, being sick or maybe you've uh, been injured. All these kinds of things are begun. It's a whole nother life, but it's spiritual. And you won't have this shell anymore. But in order to get this great gift, you have to understand your Creator. You have to understand the rules that he gave us, which are pretty basic. And then he only asks that you put your faith in him, give your life to him, repent and ask for forgiveness through Jesus. And that's enough of that. I'll, I'll, I won't go that much farther. I'm not trying to turn you off. I just want you to be curious. Do you ever get kind of, you, you know, Instead of trying to figure out which media is right or whatever, why don't you find out what's the big fuss about the Jews and Israel? What's the big fuss? There's only one way to find out. Read that book. If you want to understand, was there a flood and why don't they see? I mean, the evidence is there. There's some uh, studies in the Grand Canyon and stuff. There's been some obvious things that there was a flood. So a lot of the Bible is backed up by uh, fact and by proof. There's not many other books I can think of that can do that. And not to mention fulfilled prophecies. So you've got a lot to think about. Are you ready? After years of research and countless hours of R&D work, teams were assembled, research was presented, and the idea was put out to the public. If this could be done, the world would be amazed. Outdoor life would be changed forever. Hiking, vacation, and camping would never be the same. They got the work, they started designing, they made the product, and it's here today just for you. Yes, Ranger Rob poopy bags are finally here. They're bigger, deeper, smell like lemon, and strong. Available at Amazon at low cost and free shipping. And we are back. And yes, you get a chance. Go check out Ranger Rob poopy bags. I think you'll like them. 
uh, created something we thought was pretty good, a little better, uh, definitely better than the uh, what you're probably used to. Give it a shot. They're affordable, and uh, you'll like them, and you'll never go back. Uh, so, getting back real quick about a touch a little bit. I don't want this to be a, this is not a religious show. I am not qualified. I can only give you a little bit of a hunch that maybe you should go check it out. Check it out. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. However, don't think it's going to be a pretty sight. Will people die? Yep. Will people be hurt? Yes. Will people be crucified in a sense for having a, a faith? Well, according to the Bible, yes. However, if you have faith and know where you're going and you're ready, it's not going to matter much because the gift you're going to get and uh, standing up for what you believe in and what is right and standing up for God and Jesus and you're prosecuted for it and you could because Christians tend to be a little rebelish. Uh, we could be a thorn in a lot of people's side that are trying to run this place and uh, religion is, and I'm not talking about religion actually. I don't really even want to call myself a certain religion. Uh, I follow the book. Um, I let people interpret it for me, but I don't want to say I'm Lutheran or Baptist or, or whatever different uh, scenarios you see out there. Uh, those are man-made religions. Just work on your faith. Be independent. Do your thing. And if you feel like you like to associate with a certain group in that, power to you. But the best thing to do is follow the Bible and read it. And don't think it's going to be an easy road. There's going to be suffering. However, there's some promises in there that's, that's going to make things a little easier for folks of faith when the time comes. Um, in the meantime, in the short term, we've got to deal with things like sh food shortages and things like that. So I'm saying, if you can, this is the time to start learning how to grow a garden. This is the time to do a little prepping. This is the time to be able to defend what you have already. Let's hope it never gets to that, but it could. And, uh, yeah, I think it's time for you to really think about, are you ready? Because we're just, I think if you would play this video a month or two from now, you would go, oh my gosh, I wish I would have listened. I wish I would. You know some of the things that you need to get ready for, either knocking off some bills, um, get rid of some debt while you can maybe buy a little silver and gold that's up to you have a little cash on hand in case the banks have some issues if you if you got it consolidate maybe bring your families together maybe bring your kids home back to live with you and share the resources to make it more affordable so uh, when things get tight you can hold on to what you got those are kind of extreme health insurance, uh, learning how to be able to take care of yourself and not run to the doctor every time you get the sniffles, a little research on survival and health. Because I get a feeling that some of that's going to be a little harder to do. And if we all start losing our health insurance because we're unemployed, uh, we have to know our bodies and be able to do some of the things ourselves and it will save money and that's one of the reasons why you won't go to the doctor because of the money so i'm just asking you once again are you ready i hope this was a video to make you think a little it's not a preaching vi a video it's just ones like do you have things in check are you prepared and have you even educated yourself to understand what's going on beyond what you're hearing 
on your five o'clock news. Get educated. Get ready. Thanks for listening. This is Easy Street. I'm Rob Scribner. Till next time, be safe and get ready. Bye.